please, a big Collider Heroes welcome from me and from Koi to our guest today, Andrew Howard from Watchmen. Hey, man. Hello, how's it going? Going great. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Bah humbug. <laughs> Tis the season, I respect Tis it. Tis the season, yeah. <laughs> Respect it. My daughter loves this. She's like, good. Be anti. It also suits your character. Like looking behind you and looking right there. Like this all kind of blends together. Oh, yeah, behind me. <laughs> you are. You are. Yeah, it's good. I kept the red theme going. <laughs> <laughs> so of course you play Red Scare on Watchmen, which has become one of our favorite shows of all time. Ever. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. There, I have people crawling out of the woodwork, um, celebrating the fact that this is a monumental show. And I think something that, that um, you know, undergroundly crossed over culturally. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and really made an impact because it's not just comic book. It's, it's telling a really, really wonderful tale about American history and how it's put us in the place we're in now and did it in a weird and wonderful, bonkers, beautiful way. And uh, I'm so, so proud to be part of it. I really am. It, um, I'm, I think Lindelof is a genius and the people that he hired to work on the show uh, are, are brilliant. So it's, it's a, been a magnificent moment in my, in my life, yeah. And we'll see what happens down the road. Now it's a show of dichotomies. <laughs> it's a show of like extreme polarity because your, your, your super suit effectively is the most grounded thing I've ever seen. Like I've seen guys wearing this and then you're also in scenes where it's raining squids. Now for you as, as a performer, what's it like being on a set that is so like the juxtaposition that's crazy? <clears throat> well, that was perfect. And that was the way that I helped build the character or, or how, how we built the character is that the, the, the show is, is on one level, very rudimentary and very low tech, but at the same time, it's way beyond what we what, what we're having and being served by now. There's no internet, so therefore the internet is at the internet is in its infancy. So in terms of Big Brother and those giant World Wide Web algorithms that are dominating our lives right now, that's not there. So there's still some some kind of innocence to people because I think we've all been corrupted now. Um, but there is still a big brother, and the police are now in masks in Tulsa. Um, and, and the question comes up, do the police need to be policed, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of, <clears throat> of being in a, a, a high-tech, low-tech world, I think that juxtaposition partly cuts through what the show is about, which is the split in society right now, or one of the themes of the show. Um, so yeah, it was. I I was so delighted to, to, <laughs> to be wearing such a shitty costume. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. I'm 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 I'm. I mean, number one, just just as a as a as an actor, artistically, to get into a trailer and always look at the call times in the morning. And go, yeah, they put me in for like eight minutes to get ready, <laughs> <laughs> which is which, which is brilliant, because we're shooting in Atlanta and. Um, and so I'm like, oh great, I can set the alarm for, you know, Regina's in at five. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in at eight. <laughs> yeah. Zipper, yeah. tie shoes, all right. No, it's li it was literally like Clark Kent walking into the... <laughs> Amazing. I'd walk in and re I'm ready. You got a phone booth, we're good. Yeah. yeah. The opposite of every other superhero property is like, here's my mask. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and then I... I was able to have that mask just in my hand, which, which <laughs> everyone's fixed and trust. And, you know, it takes an hour of assistance to get it all ready before one take. And they go, you ready, Andrew? And I go, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Poor yeah, young ass there the night before <laughs> getting blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 2 a.m. Call, kind, oh, call times, yeah. My goodness. But, um, I mean, we had to finagle it a bit. I, I was, you know, for the dialogue and for me eating and stuff we had to make sure that it it felt like an, an old crusty piece of uh, an old crusty friend and and to make sure that you could you know i could speak because the original one they gave me i was like, oh. <laughs> I was like that wide mouth frog joke you know that wide mouth frog joke <laughs> no well, it's a funny one. I mean, it's no it, not for now it's too long <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my daughter's favorites now thematically <laughs> what do you see as the difference between a masked vigilante and a masked cop because that's one of the big questions of the show. And you got to play someone that had to deal with that walking that line. I, th I think there's a, there's a real similarity to it. Mm. Um, I think that obviously 
the police at the moment are very polarizing identity in the in the country at the moment and um and we need we really need to address the way the cops have helped or, or been a part of of, of dividing this country right. through their actions but conversely or on the other side of the fence we need cops more than ever we need policing otherwise we're fucked can i swear i think we can yeah we'll get creative so it's an orange show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> no, but uh, otherwise we're sc we're screwed, right? You know, the, the, if if we don't have police, society is screwed. Um, but I don't think police should be wearing masks mm. in, in any way, shape, or form. And the police shouldn't have to be protecting their family and being threatened by their families. Mm. Um, and that's what it all boils down to. And that's the the crux of this guy and Regina's character is to protect their identity because they, they want to try and protect their families. So it's, it's a fascinating dichotomy. Yeah. So it absolutely is uh, one of the things that stands out in the series is that every corner you look in, you just want to zoom in and get the whole story. <laughs> but we had a limited amount of time we got to spend with them. Uh, and Red Scare was one of my favorite parts of that. I want, I want to know more. I want to know, do you have a whole, do you know a lot about Red Scare that we don't know yet? No. Mm. Or do I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the show what? Bible. Is like <laughs> I'm just curious. What, what was the process like? No, no, for you? no. Absolutely, there was there was a huge process because there was so much secrecy because Damon and his team had to safeguard mm. so much of what was about to be exposed. I mean, I don't think Yaya knew he was Manhattan. <laughs> until, you know, night before he's about to be painted fucking blue. Oh, no. that's incredible. No, that's not true. <laughs> but it, no, no, but it, but it was during the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. He'd been hired as, 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 as Cal, 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 as Angela's yeah. husband. And, uh, and yeah, truly, he, he wasn't told until, I, I mean, there must have been messages from, from agents saying he needs to accept this role. Wink, wink. Yeah, wink, wink. Nudge, I, I, would, I, would, I would, I would assume. I mean, I've had the odd wink, wink in the past, <laughs> and on this, but there must have been a bing. <laughs> You've got two days. Learn omnipotence. <laughs> What's it like to know everything? Figure yeah. it out, actor. <laughs> yeah, go research. Um, but um, <clears throat> so, from my point of view, uh, I was, I, I was very in the dark. Damon, I was one of the first cast. That's so incredible. <clears throat> Apart from Regina, who the role was written for her, mm -hmm. um, there was, um, I was shooting a, a, a CW show in Utah with a great bunch of people with no budget um, and having a lot of fun. And then I got a call saying, <clears throat> can you put yourself down on tape for Watchmen? And I thought, oh my goodness, Watchmen? And then Damon Lindelof? Wow, so I did a bit, a bit of a Google and saw how Damon had been you know, obsessed with it since his father gave him the the, the novel on on uh, on his lap. You know, way back when, and um, and so I was immediately intrigued. And then I got this monologue, which was an extraordinary monologue of a basically him. I don't know if I can say this, but whatever. <laughs> but basically, him uh, in a confessional box, talking about this event that happened in his life. <clears throat> so I read it, and I and it's a beautiful piece of dialogue that Damon wrote as the audition piece for the character. But on paper, the character said a behemoth, a, a giant, giant guy, who you can imagine in that environment, in that world, you could see that dynamic happening mm -hmm. with Angela and Looking Glass, and then this giant, you know, red glow. Um, but they saw my tape. I made this little tape. Um, and uh, and it resonated with them, and then as from that moment on, I was their guy, uh, Damon and uh, Nikki Cassell, who, who's executive producer and dire directed the mm -hmm. pilot. So um, so I you know I made this little tape, and it took like twenty minutes, but I guess I had the bones of what is behind the mask, and not what you see as the exterior and you play larger than life character like uh i loved your turn in limitless and then uh you do know, alex on stage like these characters are all like huge physically by their presence not by their actual physicality is that something that you're drawn to as an actor do you want to play characters that have just so much to them 
as soon as you meet them, like, this is this guy. No, I love getting physical. I love getting, you know, I love getting the brawn out. But I think essentially what's good about uh, me as an actor is, is, is that I'm good at playing the villain, but there's got to be some sensitive side behind it and some, some reality. And I think I'm good at finding that, that little position. Uh, and also the other thing, you know, with Limitless, one of the reasons why I got that job is because you got to you got to play villains with a twinkle in your eyes. You can't. You see all these guys trying to be trying to be mean, and and they look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it with a smile on your face. Yeah. If your mustache swirling, there has to be more there. Like, you can't just be. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm the ultimate <laughs> mustache swirler. <laughs> But then you turn around and you deliver such a, a funny human performance for this character who could have been like a scary dude only, yeah. um, but has so many sides to him. I, I, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what's what's great about him. And, and you know, we kind of built it on the day. The first scene in the, sh in, the, in the show where you see us in the precinct, I was in the script, it said I was eating a donut. And I went, I'm in a, I'm in a freaking... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we call them balaclavas, where I come from, but um, your ski mask. I'm in a fucking ski mask, and I'm eating a donut. I'm like, that's interesting. So I went, right, let's make that, let's make that an essential part of who he is, <laughs> and let's metabolize this motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> and, and make sure that whenever we see him, if we can, he's eating. Mm -hmm. And so just those little beats suddenly I impose upon you Def, you know, defining and bringing life to the character. So then, you know, for instance, I'm the next time we're in the precinct, <clears throat> and I go to the uh, the the medic on set, who's this one wonderful wonderful lady, and she's eating Cheetos with a plastic fork, and I'm like, that's fucking genius. Yeah? <laughs> Cause she's, cause she's a, she's a nurse and she's got, and if people get sick or something, she's got, her cans are got to be clean. <laughs> so I was like, I'm stealing that. <laughs> and so that becomes the next moment where That's I'm, amazing. where I've got a pack of what, a pack of cheese and I've got my cheeses and I've got my plastic fork. So you just kind of, as an actor, you you know, like, um, you know, like a vulture, just scram, you know, scrambling around for goods. Um, and so that's how the, the character build, obviously, the, the wardrobe was in place at the at the offset, and um, I I have so many references for the film, but one of, one of my big re personal references for for the movie and and for my character is um, uh, Old Boy, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is one of my favorite films, and um, and I kept going back to moments of that. And I guess I had my own little fantasies that I'd have that big slow mo <laughs> <laughs> going up tracking, the stairs tracking, around the yeah. tracking fight, yeah. Um, which, which you know, my uh, down down the road I'll do it someday. But um, but it informed me. And then I went and met Nikki uh, Cassell. Um, Just when, extraordinary direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a, a brilliant woman, brilliant woman. I, you you can't say enough about it. Dame was so smart to get on board and. Uh, and what she brought to it, the levity and the, and the, and the wit. And it's, I mean, it's, people can't get over how filmic it is. Um, but, go, but going back to that, I walked into her office when she was her production office in Atlanta the first day I met her after having conversations on the phone and emails. And I walked into her, her, her office and her mood board was giant of, you know, there was everything. I mean, the show was everything. There yeah. was everything was there, you know, from Kubrick to oh, everything was there. And I zoomed in on this photo of Old Boy. I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are the same we're page. On, we're on the same page. Yeah. Now you're doing a, a show that has basically nine movies uh, worth of styles and choices and direction. And were each of the scripts? Did you did they have a different tone when you were reading them the first time? Did they all feel different? Because like episode six is so different than nine, and eight so different than two. And <clears throat> no, I every time you thought you were reading a new a new epic movie that was going to be out in 2022. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, really, they are there. I know Lindelof says the whole season stands alone, but I think every episode stands mm. alone. You don't need to know what happened before to just be engaged and, and uh, in, enthused by what you're seeing. Um, yeah, I mean, I have never read a script where 
and it was so secretive getting you know you couldn't get a fucking hard copy out from the <laughs> save your life you know <laughs> and uh and i and i finally did get a couple of hard co copies i was like <laughs> <laughs> my souvenir result yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> ebay <laughs> and, and uh but every, but every time i read them they were they were so dense so deep i'm a I'm a novice of Watchmen, but obviously I did my homework. I, mm. I, I read, I read, the, read the, the graphic novels. Um, it, it, it was still astonishing to try and figure out how are they going to shoot this? How is this? This is a TV show. <laughs> how are they going to bring this off? And I think, I mean, it, it was a, not a struggle, but it was a huge feat, mm. a huge effort to, to bring it to fruition. I know that, you know, we shut down for 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 a, for a couple of months not because any, anything was wrong but just because everyone had to take stock and 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 make sure that everyone was up to speed because everyone realized that they were building such a a huge world um that it was you know it was hard to hard to bring off but i think they did it stupendously i mean it's you know, my girl, my girlfriend this morning, we watched the, because I know we were coming in, we watched the finale this mm. morning. And, um, and you know, she's a journalist. She's a, she's a, she, she has an opinion. And she is just, how did you, how did they, how did they do this? How did they bring this so cyc cyclically, perfectly back together and make it a huge round? Um, People are people are really knocked out by it, so I'm you know. I, um, I we do a comic book show, and I think it's the best adaptation of something that I didn't think was able to be adapted. It, it is perfect, <laughs> man. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, Lindelof just done a done a magnificent job with with his team. Crystal Henry, who's an ex Chicago cop, uh, and and now an executive producer and writer on the show. I mean, he couldn't have brought together such a magnificent team. Oh my gosh. So the, the assembled superheroes who made the show, I think I'm very excited for us all to get familiar with. Um, but you are also kind of part of the HBO family now, right? Um, and you have yeah. some more stuff coming up. I yeah. Think? I'm, uh, I'm sitting very awkwardly today because yesterday I was, um, I was beaten to within an inch of my life <laughs> on, uh, I mean, n n not really. I, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say too much. No, I'm shooting Perry Mason, mm. uh, which is, another just giant beautiful golden egg that i'm you know so proud to be part of an egg um, you say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh this theme is running through here oh this egg i should have looked for before <laughs> yeah no i'm super lucky to be part I, to be part of it and uh, and i get to i get to um put on a 1930s three-piece four piece woolen outfit and i'm a i'm an la it's suddenly i'm transformed to an lapd cop in 1929 going into 1930 post depression um uh, perry mason is um you know it was a, a procedural show in mm -hmm. the 60s on tv with raymond burr um but uh hbo have taken it back and felix and jones who write the show and run the show they've gone back and downey jr um collective robert and his wife uh uh, overseeing the whole show so I think it was going to be Downey Jr. that was going to play Perry originally oh interesting but then some farmyard animals got in the way I think <laughs> <laughs> they were talking to me listening to the whole thing <laughs> so um so the so the role got given to Matthew Reese mm. um from the Americans who's one of my oldest friends no yeah we um we uh we did a play on stage together at the National Theatre in London 26 years ago. Wow. Now, yeah. I, I loved reading about your stage experience, partly because Pergunt is just one of my favorite plays, and I wish I could travel back in time and see that. Pergunt? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> no one's <laughs> ever <laughs> said that to me before. I'm the, the one. theater junkie Let's... of us, yes. <laughs> You're my solving. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was fun. I, I love the way bouncing around to that different kind of work creates such strong performers obviously oh mm -hmm. good. well thank you yeah no it was uh, it, it was my first play in london after touring doing like doing stock theater for five six years when i was out of out of college and then uh and then i booked this gig uh, 
in London, and the first day I walked in, and, Ma and Matthew was this young 24-year-old skinny kid <laughs> who just got out of the Royal Academy. And, uh, and then 26 years later, we're in downtown Los Angeles shooting this show. That's incredible. With John Lithgow and, uh, uh, and these extraordinary actors, Shea Wiggum, and um, uh, it's just a, a, a myriad of brilliant, brilliant performers. I mean, the ensemble is extraordinary. And I'm having such a laugh, and I'm doing my, doing my American accent. You know, <laughs> um, it's fun. Well, congratulations from one giant ensemble to another, and stay in the HBO family and the opposite wardrobe. It sounds like so that'll be really exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it takes me a fucking hour. <laughs> <laughs> Your call time is now five in the morning. Yeah, yeah exactly. I do, well, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, please come back anytime. To I will. Tell I'll us come more. back next year and I can tell you more about Perry Mason. I want to hear about the scene we know about the effects of today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deal. Perfect. Deal. Thank you so much again, man. One trick. Because <laughs> my, I, you, you, in your, in your. Your little gift bag outside. You got these whoppers. Mm -hmm. This is my daughter's favorite okay, trick. Okay. Okay. That's how we get them you back. You give it to your family, right? Whopper. Hey, Superpowers! No, no better way to stop the show. That's the end. Thank you guys Watchmen. so much. <laughs>